blue. Hello everyone, my name is Mark the Shark, and my good old friend Jeremy will be reading a book about the Shark Lady. My name is Jeremy Patterson, and today I'm going to be reading you Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most feral scientist, written by Jess Keating. It was Saturday, and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with their sharks, to breathe underwater with gills of her own? More than anything, she wanted to find out. When the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum into her ears and ke to keep the water out, Eugenie dove down, down, and down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled and pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. To others, sharks were ugly and scary. But Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind, for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove. This time, into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swim in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks, be a secretary, be a housewife. Euge Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women aren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans, and they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. So again, Eugenie dove. She plunged into every course she could, her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they are put together, both inside and out. Despite all of the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had never been discovered before. The Red Sea Sand Diver, the Buried Xena Pipefish, and the Volcano Triplefin. On her research mission exploring the Palo Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mujeres, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she swam through dark caves, still and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugenie's darling heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon, they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. But she never forgot, many still believed that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputation, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a, pr a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned they could remember the, their training for at least two months. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. 
They deserve to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was n now a dream come true. The end. Oh, Archimedes, mateys, I'm the book pirate, and Taylor will be reading about my good friend, the Grumpy Pirates. Hi, I'm Taylor Diaz, and today I'm going to be reading to you The Grumpy Pirate by Corinne Dennis. Pirates aren't grumpy, pirates never pout, pirates smile and shout aye aye whenever they're about, aye aye. But there is one grumpy pirate, they call him Grumpy Gus, he grunts and gripes and grouses and always makes a fuss. He wakes up in his hammock and starts his day off grumpy, my breeches are too itchy, my pillow is too lumpy. He will not eat his hard egg, he will not drink his grog, he glares through the porthole and grumbles at the fog. The other pirates do their best to help Gus try to smile, but he just scowls and snivels, smiling is not my style. He skips his shift to swab the deck, he hates the coil and the ropes. Instead of helping trim the sails, he mutters and he mopes. When it's his turn to take the helm, Gus whines, this job's too tough. The other pirates finally say, we've all heard enough. Gus moans, the ship is too tippy, our course is arg, too slow. The deck is way too slippery, I think I'll go below. The pirates ask the queen for help, grumpy Gus is such a crank. Please save us from his grumpiness, or have him walk the plank. The pirate queen, who is quite wise, brings Gus a special friend. I'm giving you a pair to help your grumbling end. Gus glowers at the parrot. He asks, what good are you? What good are you? The parrot asks. The parrot glowers too. The parrot follows Gus around all day and echoes him all throughout the day. Arg, arg. He grumbles and he grouches in a very Gus like way. Hmm, hmm. I'm tired and I'm hungry. I'm cold and I'm hot. I'm feeling very grumpy, so I will frown a lot. Gus wails. This parrot's crabby. He's a sword spirit. A brat. His voice is way too whiny. Do I really sound like that? Sorry, Gus, the wise queen says. The parrot sounds like you. But if you change your attitude, the parrot will change too. I don't know if I could do it, Grumpy Gus begins to groan. But then he hears himself and says, I'll try to change my tongue. Gus tries his best at smiling. The parrot tries a beaky grin. This makes Gus start to giggle and the pirates laugh with him. Mates, you've called me grumpy, and I see, says Gus. Twas true, now just call me grinning Gus. Aye, aye, shout all the crew. That's all, guys.